Welcome back to Open Line, talking about um, fair housing in Tennessee, barriers to getting housing if you're a renter or a buyer, trying to get a mortgage. Um, Donna Duart is here, Director of Civil Rights Compliance with the Tennessee Housing Development Agency. And, and one area, we, we've talked about veterans and, and certainly races and religions that, that have barriers, but what about seniors? Are there issues surrounding seniors? Um, some of the issues that are, have come up with senior, ha with senior housing is the misunderstanding about senior housing. Um, in the mid-1980s, families with children were often denied the ability to rent housing in some apartment complexes and neighborhoods. But fair housing laws just eliminated those unnecessary barriers. Now, in senior housing complexes, 55 and older, 62 and older, um, grandparents who are living there are assuming custody, in some cases, of their um, grandchildren. And in some, I have heard of cases where grandparents have been told that they will be evicted because they have their grandchildren. But that's not true. Fair housing allows um, one of the protected classes is familial status, and in that particular case, you've got grandparents with custody of their grandchildren, and they are allowed to live at senior complexes. What if the senior complex says it's for people 55 and over? You know, you come here to retire, it's for people 55, 65, whatever the age is. How do you get around that? Well, that it, but it's, they're not protected in, under the Fair Housing Act. So under Fair Housing? Mm, that is a, that would be a violation. To say that? To say that, that a grandparent could not have their grandchildren at that property, they would have to move. It's, you can't do that. Okay. You cannot do that. Let's go to Terry. Hello, Terry. To say that, that a grandparent could not have All right, their Turn down your TV. Let's go to another Dorothy here. Hello, Dorothy. Yes. Go right ahead. Okay. Um, I, I have a couple of questions. Okay. I've learned to read, write, walk, and talk again, okay? And most of the time, the government has not helped me. Uh, I try to even teach myself now. But one of my major uh, concerns is I, I've lived in the same complex for almost 20 years. When I moved in here, it was not painted. Uh, I, I've had to put it on my credit card and do that. I've done, tried to do repairs and pay people, you know, on top of my rent. Plus, again, right, so you're saying there are some problems with where you were living and you have concerns about that. Is that right? Not, not only that, but uh, with the comfort dog. Um, with the what? What did you say? Uh, uh, I don't understand what that means, but okay, let's say she has problems with where she is living. Where does she complain? You know, the landlord won't make repairs. What, what, what should somebody do? Yeah, um, that sounds like a, a tenant-landlord situation, and I would refer her to the State Division of Conf Consumer Affairs. She can contact them at 800-342-8385. Um, they deal with situations along the lines of uh, rent, um, who makes repairs to your unit, um, I, if you have problems getting your deposit, security deposits back, unreasonable deposits of, about related to pets, things like that. So that's where I would direct her to the State Division of Consumer Affairs, 800-342-8385. And is that, that's a pretty common complaint. Right, People right. have a lot of complaints about their right, landlord. Right. So there's the number on the screen. Consumer Affairs, that's different than you all. Mm -hmm. They um, are different. And, and they are different than, than what you all do. What you do, again, is more education. Right. And what is the education in that case? Is there any other, besides just calling Consumer Affairs, is there anything a tenant should look for or be aware of? Well, one of, one of the things that we do is, um, especially with the Housing Choice Voucher Program, we do discuss with our Housing Choice Voucher tenants what um, tenant landlord uh, responsibilities are. And 
on uh, the consumer um, the uh, Consumer Affairs website, they will definitely explain the responsibilities of the landlord, the responsibilities of the tenant. There's some confusion about that in a lot of cases. So that clarifies well, Let's go to Bob. Hello, Bob. Oh, well, uh, good program. I've been Thank on you. this bill for a while. Uh, if all this new housing being built, if they could work with the uh, people, uh, Mayor Barry's doing a lot to do the civil rights thing, get the sidewalks, roadways, stuff like that. But if they could get 1% of the uh, apartments being built for uh, Section 8 or something like that, uh, they might do it volunteer, they might not. It's all federal funding, like you said. Um, that's been turned down as far as medical, but uh, things are getting better, I'd say, but, you know, it's a political, uh, heading into a, like a political nightmare or something. Okay, well, I, I, I think I understand what you're saying. Right, he's saying, can we have some sort of mandate? One percent of new properties built are for affordable housing. Do you all weigh into those fights? Uh, we really, really don't. We that's something that is between the city and the people that live in that city and and elect their um, uh, local officials. That's that is it's been it's been brought up. It is tough to do, mm -hmm. and you're not you're not even going there. We're, we don't advocate one way or the other. So you don't you don't okay. Um, <laughs> All right, what does fair housing look like in a neighborhood, community, and city? Um, thanks for asking. One of the things that we want people to recognize what fair housing looks like, it looks like um, your office place, it looks like our school systems, it looks like a hospital, the grocery store. There's, it's just opportunity for all. You will see all shapes and sizes and and different shades of color and it, it should just not be one particular cookie cutter that everybody would be the same. That might be something that you know wouldn't necessarily not be fair housing or not be fair housing, but you would just see more openness, more inclusiveness, more choice. And do you think we're there? I, I think that we're a lot further along than we were in 1968, and we probably have a long way to go. And, and, and how do we get there then? Education. Um, as I said, um, this is Fair Housing Month. There'll be a lot of opportunities, not only in Nashville, but in Knoxville, in Memphis, in Jackson, and Chattanooga for uh, workshops, trainings, conferences that are open to the public. And the more we talk about what fair housing looks like, um, the, the more we educate and we remove those barriers because, as I said, in a lot of cases now, people don't even realize what the barriers are that they've created an artificial barrier. So whereas before it was intentional, now it's unintentional. Right. Where we've made that's big progress. I so now so. it's just edu it's primarily education. And that's that's what THDA supports. We su we are supporting all these conferences um, with not only by sponsoring but by being there, by having a presence, by uh, telling our housing. Uh, our program um, participants that these these workshops were available for them and then um, just promoting it on our website through Twitter all social media. Alright we'll take a break we'll come back and wrap everything up take a break be back right after this.